Hello everyone, welcome to our podcast. I'm Pravina and these are the two other speakers, Moindran and Arvin. Hello. Hello, Pravina. Hi, hello guys. So it's kind of hard to meet you guys nowadays huh, due to COVID. So how are you guys doing? So, hello, Pravina and Moindran. Yeah, I'm doing good. And how are you all doing? Yeah, it seems like COVID cases are rising day by day. So yeah. Hello, Pravina and Arvin. I'm kind of sick, but still managing well, yeah. Yeah, take care. So, today our podcast topic will be about Hyperium, Lotia, and Dolarus also. So, based on my understanding, Hyperium is the period of adjustment after childbirth during uh, which the mother's reproduction system returns to its normal pre-pregnant state. And I think it generally lasts from six to eight weeks and it ends with the first ovulation and return to normal menstruation. So, is that true, guys? What do you guys think about this? Oh, that's a very good explanation, Farina. But based on my understanding, the perpurium is also known as the postpartum period, where it begins immediately after the childbirth. Uh, and it can be explained by the fact that the larger the litter, the more likely the placenta will be retained. And the retention of the membrane can result in the atonia of the uterus, placentitis, or placentella necrosis. And the evidence for the retained placenta can be obtained both by vaginal examination and by abdominal palpitation. So what do you think uh, about uh, this thing, Arvin? So to add to your point, uh, an explanation. So the retained placenta can be observed by dark black green, sometimes friable vaginal discharge. And the vaginal speculum shows uh, dark green, sometimes friable membranes in the cervical channel and in the body. And also the horns of the uterus. And large quantity of uh, dark black green, watery vaginal discharge. And... On palpation, characteristics are uh, soft and uh, bulbous, so and also enlargement is uh, detectable. Ah, uh, I see. So the treatment for this will be timely removal of the retained placenta with forceps through an inserted uh, vaginal speculum. If all the placentas have been removed, both horns of the uterus are easily recognizable on palpation. So that is a very good point, actually. So let's talk about the second point. So what do you guys think about uh, the postpartum uterine inversion and prolapse? So prolapse uh, of the uterus can be observed after an easy rapid birth or more rarely after a long and difficult parturition and can be also completed or incomplete. The incomplete uh, prolapse has a cylindrical appearance and the complete uterine prolapse are... Uh, looks Y-shaped. If the prolapse exists for a long time, the surface dries out and necrosis occurs. So, Mointen, what do you think about the therapy or treatment will be? Um, based on this case, the constant treatment only indicates uh, in the press cases, except in a very calm patient, reprocessing is carried out under general uh, sedation. And the prolapse uterus is replaced up to the end of the horn, which is the tip of the vaginal speculum. This process is controlled by palpating the abdomen. Uh, Pravina, what do you think the surgical method should be? Yeah? Mm, I think it should be a laparotomy as the mesa ovarium is more tense and the ovaries are displaced caudally according to the degree of prolapse. After bilateral ovariectomy, uh, of the mesometrium is separated. The prolapse part of the uterus can be replaced in abdominal cavity by gently pulling on the non-prolapse uterus while simultaneously aiding repositioning with the tip of vaginal speculum uh, via vagina. Hysterectomy is carried out using a cat gut stump ligature. And the postpartum hemorrhage is caused by birth injuries and placental necrosis or develops from sub involution of the placental sites. So bleeding can be vary in its intensity. Oh, I like to add to that. For the death, the therapy should indicate a lower gate hemorrhage where the point will show from one to four uh, IU oxidoxin, uh, SQ bit and tip moderate. Uh, hemorrhage should show around 25 to 50 mg. And uh, another one will be higher gate hemorrhage where you can do hobisotrectomy or blood transfusion. Hmm. So, do you guys know the delayed involution of uterus is the 
most commonly occurring pathology of piperium is the postpartum atony of uterus. The cause are long birth, overstretching of the wall of uterus by a large number of fetus, increased age, overweight mother, and disease in mother before or during parturition. And the therapy is 1 to 4 IU of oxytocin, SUBID, or TIP. Okay, so this will surprise you. The postpartum intox uh, intoxication uh, and infections arise from the reabsorption of toxins from the damped up contents of the uterus. And it is usually chronic, manifests itself clinically and commonly around the third uh, post-parturition day and last over several days and the disease of uh, it, the disease is characterized by lassitude and also loss of appetite dehydration uh, low grade rise in temperature uneven skin temperature distribution uh, increased cardiac activity small frequent pulse uh, cyanosis of the mucosa and increased injection of the epistleral vessels uh, I like to add to that. Uh, the vaginal distress is a mucus, a grayish red brown color, and has an unpleasant surface odor. On palpitation, a fully contracted uterus is detected. The process in general proper infection is more stormy. The symptoms are exhaustion, loss of appetite, dehydration, high grade increase, body temperature, increased cardiac activity, small frequent class, radiant mucosa, increased aspiratic tension vomiting and uh, complete suppression of lactation. And the loccia are evident as in total intoxin grayish with brown of a mucus consciously and with unpleasant surface smelling. Hmm. Then the therapy uh, should be for this should be uh, antibiotics or infusion. Have you guys heard that one particular form of epidural infection is placental necrosis. The causes are uterine infection dead amphysomatous fetus and placentas which has been uh, have been remained too long in the uterus and they can lead to necrotic changes at the placental sites and rupture into the abdominal cavity. Clinically, the symptoms are recognizable as those of a rapid onset septicemia. The beach declines very quickly. The low-grade to moderate loccia are yellow, brown and friable. Okay, and uh, I would like to add on to that, so the therapy for this should be immediate ovario hysterectomy, infusion therapy, and abdominal leverage uh, and antibiotics, right? And also, I would like to share another info. So this is because the sub, sub in, in ovulation of the placental areas is recognizable and cold, 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 sorry, sorry called poscopy and a low grade bright red to red brown uh, vaginal discharge. And on palpation by the ampullary uterine uh, swellings from the size of a pigeon's egg to that of a hen's egg. In the area of uh, the placental sites uh, via ultrasound, the patients have a low grade anemic mucosa and very largely unimpaired. General Health, which also uses our uh, ovario hysterectomy method. Oh, that's very interesting, Arvind. Let's talk about loccia. Do you guys know that the loccia is the vaginal leeches you have after a vaginal delivery? It has a stale, nasty odor like a menstrual discharge. And loccia are the first three day uh, delivery is in a dark red color and a few uh, blood flow and no larger than a plum are normal. The third stage of labor result in expression of the placenta, and one placenta should be identified for each fetus delivered, and uh, they are usually attached to the fetus by the umbilical cord and emerge with the fetus, but may emerge also within 15 minutes uh, or to several hours if they become detached. Ah, that's interesting. Loccia, a greenish vaginal discharge, indicates placental separation and may be seen during all stages of labor. Following parturition, the discharge gradually becomes red-brown, decreasing in volume over four to six weeks as uterine involution takes place. Do you guys know that uh, anything about the postpartum com complications? 
So, uh, Pravina, uterine uh, inertia is uh, defined as a labor in which uh, the first stage has lasted for 48 hours and or more in the absence of pelvic contraction. The delay being associated with uh, abnormal uterine action, which is classified into uh, primary uterine, uh, sorry, uterine inertia and also secondary uterine inertia. Uh, inertia. So, Mohintan, can you explain about the primary uterine? Ah, okay, Erwin. Uh, the primary this is described as the total of the partial absence of contraction to the expel of a normal fetus through an unobstructed canal. And several causes have been found. Breed predeposition, large litter, overexing the uterus, and small litter not surmounting the uterus enough. Small fetus cannot apply enough pressure on the uterine wall and the cervix to set up the progression reflexes. Systematic disease, obesity, and lack of exercise, hypolocamia, and septicma are one of the events. Complete primary uterine inertia occurs if second stage labor does not begin, and partial inertia occurs if the second stage begins but contraction soon fails. Pravina, what do you think about the secondary uterine inertia? Yeah? Uh, secondary uterine muscle, after a period of good uh, uterine contraction, then it's failed to overcome an obstruction, so the uterus is exhausted. There's usually subclinical hypocalcemia or hypoglycemia. This can occur in a sore beach and guinea pig. The treatment for beach is in good condition with normal size puppies and no obstruction. Medical treatment can be attempted. Oxytoxin can be administered uh, intramuscularly, repeated at 30 minutes for maximum of three injections. Calcium gluconate or dextrose solution also can be administered if suspicion of hypocalcemia or hypoglycemia exists. A caesarean section is indicated if there's no response to oxytoxin or if uh, fetus are too large for vaginal birth. So, Arvin, um, what do you think about this? So, um, well, uterine antony is the failure of uh, the uterus to contract adequately following delivery. Contraction of the uterine muscles during labor compresses the blood vessels and slows flow which helps prevent hemorrhage and it facilitates coagulation. And therefore, a lack of uterine muscle contraction can lead to an acute uh, hemorrhage. And the vasculature is not being sufficiently compressed. So uterine atony is the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage, which is an emergency and potential cause of fatality. Uh, across the globe, postpartum uh, hemorrhage is a top five cause of maternal death. Recognition of the warning signs of uterine atony is in the setting of extensive uh, postpartum bleeding. Should initiate interventions and aimed at regaining stable uterine contraction. Oh, that is a very good explanation, Arvin. So I guess we are at the end of our podcast discussion. And I guess we learned a lot from this discussion. So, see you guys. Thank you very much, Mointen. Thank you Thank very you much, Mointen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys.